Yeah, it's one of my favorite movies. Um, since then, I, I like watch a lot of movies. I remember when I uh, when I, when I was a kid, I uh, used to rent a lot of movies with my dad, and uh, we would watch them all. And yeah. I know I, I've seen a lot. I, I know a, a lot of movies uh, like since then. Yeah. What's your favorite movie of of time? I'd say Pulp Fiction and A Clockwork Orange. Those okay. from my two favorite directors. I um, yeah, I really like uh, those movies. Yeah, it's Quentin Tarantino, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yeah. And that's uh, Sandy Kubrick. Okay. Uh, why is he so good at making movies? Mm, I don't know. It, it's just a personal preference. Like in style, I think that it's really focused. It uh, doesn't uh, rely much on digital effects. Mm -hmm. I prefer movies when they have like practical effects, like uh, you know, with puppets and stuff. Yeah. Like that. Just comes across more real than like a computer yeah. effect, yeah, and right. like the dialogue and the way uh, the movie uh, immerses you in its story. It's just I like I like that stuff. Okay, and uh, as you just saw, uh, there's a new uh, movie theater in uh, Leeuwarden, New Pathé. Are you gonna visit that uh, theater? Uh, probably not. Uh, I work uh, like I, I work at Kinopolis in Groningen, so I get go for free. And when I'm not going to Kinopolis, I'm going to the uh, Groningen uh, Forum, mm -hmm. and I have a discount there. I pay like six fifty per ticket. Yeah. So I don't think that I'm going to the Pate Leeuwarden, but like maybe after school sometimes or something. Yeah. So one of the biggest problem is then that uh, Pate offers the same movies as Kinopolis does. Uh, not really. Uh, you, uh, Kinopolis and Groningen has like uh, a smaller uh, set of movies that they show like every month. Yeah. And the Pate has more uh, more rooms where they show the movies in, and it's they have more events like more like art house or they show uh, operas or uh, yeah. you know, live concerts. And Kinopolis doesn't mm -hmm. really do that often, not in Groningen, like in Utrecht or, or Rotterdam, they yeah. uh, show that stuff like more often. Yeah. Okay, and a lot of people think that the new Pate is unnecessarily awarded because there are already three other movie theaters. What, what do you think about that? Three. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't really matter. Um, like the movie theaters in Leeuwarden, from what I, uh, from what I got from it, are showing like the same kind of movies that Kinopolis are showing, and like regular but they, uh, uh, Facebook theaters are showing. And personally, I I hope that they're gonna <coughs> have a bigger set of movies that they're gonna show. I don't think that it's really gonna differentiate from other. Uh, but the uh, theaters, mm -hmm. but I hope like more, maybe more art house than like mainstream movies. Uh, yeah. So what should be your advice uh, to uh, Pate? Should it divide like genres for each uh, theater? Like I, I, I get that they don't really have an option to like show different movies per theater because it's like uh, it's a franchise. So mm -hmm. you know you have to stick with the program that you are given by uh, by your uh, by, by your boss. Let's, yeah. So to say. Um, but I do hope that, like, with more theaters, that they have can kind of have more options for like different types of uh, <coughs> visitors. Yeah. Like everyone likes a different kind of movie. Yeah. So I hope more art house or more indie movies. So more art house in the world should be uh, advice today. Yeah. Like it get, it also gives like a more of a platform for like indie movie makers yeah. and right. movies that are less known. Yeah. So uh, yeah, more more movies. More. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And do you think Leeward is uh, great enough for four theaters? Sure, yeah. like people. Yeah, we we have like three theaters in Groningen, like Negen. four if you count uh, if you count uh, what's his name, Dat right. Cinema. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's okay. Like, you can never never have uh, enough movie theaters. All right, clear. Yeah.
Sim. So, uh, thank you a lot for sharing uh, everything Sim, related to the news. Uh, the next item is off the wall. Our students uh, uh, took a look at a new poster from an upcoming event and asked people in the streets of Leeuwarden what they think about it. So, let's take a look. On January 26 and 27, the year of the European capital of culture will be officially opened. In different cities in Friesland, you are able to listen to famous stories that happened in Friesland. But do the people in Leeuwarden even know that this event is taking place on the 26 and 27 of January? Wat vindt u ervan dat Leeuwarden de culturele hoofdstad is 2018? Ik vind het wel wat. Ah, fantastisch. Leuk. Ik hoop dat het veel mensen trekt. Dat het goed is voor de stad in ieder geval. Ja, dat is natuurlijk een geweldige hoofdstad. Ja. Ik heb eerst nog twee gasten. Ja, mooi. Mooi reclame voor Friesland. Nou, ik zeg, uh, ik vind het wel een eye-catching voor de rest van de wereld. Ja. Bent u het ook terecht? Ja, 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 dat wel. Qua, qua inspanning en voorbereiding vind ik het wel terecht. Ik vind dat we zijn niet minder dan een stad in de rest. Absoluut niet. We hebben gewoon uh, veel te bieden. We hebben veel leuke ja. dingen, zoals het Museum inderdaad. Maar ja, er zijn, er zijn wel leuke, leuke, leuke steden, denk ik zelf. <laughs> oh, ik vind het wel een attractiviteit. Ik vind het wel een attractiviteit. Ja, waarom niet? Ja, ja, maar dan. Ja. Wat denk jij? Moet je toch iets? Ik zou hem laag zetten. Ja, maar best gelijk. Ja, Linker, zou jij de camera eventjes iets lager willen doen? Het is een beetje 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 een ik meende dat het 29 januari was. Ik meende ergens eind januari. Het was midden van 27 januari. Gewoon. Weet u ook wat er te doen is tijdens het openingsweekend? Uh, nou, ik volg het niet zo, maar ik weet wel, ja, er zijn verschillende Nee, nee, nee. nee. Ja, van alles. Uh, er zijn voordrachten, uh, er is muziek. Uh, er wordt een Fries lied gezongen door de basisscholen. Uh, dus van alles, ja. Allerlei projecten, allerlei voorstellingen. Van alle Ik zou een beetje kunnen inzoomen. Nee, ja, niet ja, eens. Heel slecht, maar. De, de fonteinen okay. worden nou, goed, dan natuurlijk goed. officieel goed. ook uh, geopend. En op de 26e worden er verhalen verteld ja. Ja. over Leeuwarden, zeg maar, over de geschiedenis en andere verhalen. En wat vindt u daarvan? Vindt u dat een goed idee? Nee. Ik vind het niks. Ik denk dat het voor de camera altijd goed is. Nee. Ik vind het wel passend bij het uh, thema van de cultuur. Een klein stukje, dat is zeg maar stenten boven een beetje een boven een Ah, dat vind ik wel heel interessant. Ik ben zelf een oud leven. Ik woon nu midden in maar ik ben wel geboren. Dat vind ik wel leuk. En dat is op diverse locaties. Onder andere in de Prinsentuin bijvoorbeeld. Ja, ik denk wel. Dat is de basis van de stad. Als mensen op die manier weer wat meer Leeuwarden leren kennen, dan wel. Gaat u zelf heen naar het openingsweekend? Ik wil het wel proberen inderdaad. Ik weet niet of beide dagen lukt, maar wel in ieder geval even dagen meemaken. Ja, zeker weten. Ja. Uh, nee. Nee, wij zien wel eh, wat, op, wat er op ons afkomt. Als het enigszins kan, dan zullen we zeker uh, aanwezig zijn. Want die mensen uit heel Europa komen hier naartoe, dus uh, dan ga ik ook zeker even kijken. The people of Leeuwarden are looking forward for the opening weekend, but they do not know what is going to happen. So today is Jesse Bakbier with us. He, made, uh, he has made videos for Omroep Leo to promote the Leeuwarden 2018 event. I'm going to ask uh, Bakbier some questions about his work <laughs> for the event. So welcome, uh, Jesse Bakbier. Um, what did you actually do for uh, Leo? Uh, well, Omroep Leo asked me and some fellow students to uh, create content for their TV program called uh, Free Yourself. Um, we made two episodes and uh, we mostly created the content of the episodes. Okay. So, um, and the, the program... Uh, Insist, consists of three short items, like yeah. news items, one interview, and uh, a street interview. Okay, and how did the uh, organization from Leeuwarden 2018 uh, find you to make uh, this video? Oh, well, it was an assignment from school. Like, uh, we were uh, in the production module and we were asked to do this. Okay. Like, uh, operation assignment. Okay, yeah. and what kind of promotions are there in the videos? Three? Um, well, we show, like, um, that Arif, Arif has main sponsor of the Leeuwarden 2018, so we show that. Um, we show the DNA project, that's Sorry. like, uh, a, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, artwork in the town hall. Okay, uh, uh, where is that? It's in the town hall here in oh. Leeuwarden, by... Uh, um, 
Yeah, but the town. <laughs> <laughs> we will find it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we have Google Maps. Yeah, and what did you relate uh, further? Uh, what did we more? Uh, yeah, we did the street interviews. We talked about people, what they think about Leo 2018, like they did in the uh, item as well. Yeah. And you can see most people are divided about it. They think some people think like it's a waste of money. Yeah. Other really? people think uh, they like it. They like that there will happen some things in Leo because they found Leo a bit, a bit boring. Yeah. Some people call it even a spoke town. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, yeah. So you talked to, to a lot of people. Yeah. What's the opinion in general, do you think? Uh, I think in general most people are excited for Leo 2018 because uh, yeah, there's a lot to do. Uh, they were a little bit annoyed by the, like they had to change a lot about the infrastructure yeah. for Leo 2018, but that was a little bit annoying. But now when it's finished, they're really happy. Yeah, shitty looks good. Uh, yeah, exactly. Now. And what uh, video did you enjoy the most uh, to make? Uh, I think the DNA project. The uh, idea was really nice. Like people can tell the story uh, with an artwork. I think that's really nice. And yeah. it's, it's folks for all the citizens of uh, Leeuwarden. Yeah. So everybody is involved. Three? How much artworks uh, are there? Do you, uh, do you remember? How do you mean? Like, oh, are there much? There are different kind of artworks, uh, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, and the, the DNA, DNA project. project. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. one artwork, three? but there's kind of tubes in it. A lot, like, I think 3,000 right now. Yeah. With all different stories in it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you made a video about three? the stories uh, behind the. No, and the artist right. itself. Okay. Yeah. And are there any findings you, you experience about uh, the, the World 2018? Um, yeah, I think more the citizens of Leeuwarden don't know a lot about Leeuwarden 2018. That's why this program is really important to show them what they can expect for it. Yeah. Because outside of Leeuwarden, everyone knows, oh, Leeuwarden 2018 goes for capital, but here they're like, eh, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Do you think a lot of people are going to Leeuwarden to, to visit and watch the city? Or yeah, I think so. I heard a story about uh, there's a giant project, it's like a parade with a uh, huge. Uh, uh, yeah, for puppets, I think. Yeah. And it's uh, people from all around the world are coming to watch it. So. Yeah. Mm. Also, when you arrive at the station, you immediately see like two, uh, yeah, two exactly. hats uh, Three. for exactly. it. Yeah. And um, mm. let's talk about a bit more about the videos. Um, mm. How long did you work uh, on making oh, well, we were eight weeks on the videos. Yeah. Um, we were planning on making four episodes, Three. but it took a lot of time because uh, Leeward Student Station did not actually start it yet. So yeah. It was hard to find items to fill the episode. Yeah, can you, can you tell something about the process of making a video? Uh, yeah, right. well, it started with filming, of course. Um, well, with a group, we go outside, film, do the interviews, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then we come uh, come here at Standen and do the edit part, okay. like uh, do, doing the effects. Right. Uh, sometimes you need subtitles because yeah, the Frisian. Uh, uh, sometimes people talk in Friesian, so you couldn't understand. Sense, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, if you make a video from the beginning to the end, uh, how much time? Uh, uh, yeah, well, three. filming depends on how the day, because sometimes it was raining, so then it takes a little bit longer. Yeah. So let's say we did filming about three or four days, then we had all the items for the episode, and then editing was like, three. well, it was just two weeks, I think. Three. Finalizing three. everything, three. correcting mistakes, that kind of thing, so it takes two weeks, I think. Okay, and uh, what did you enjoy the most about making these videos? Uh, well, I think I learned a lot about editing, filming, and, and Leeward 2018 as well, so yeah. it's really interesting. And what are, what are some things you disliked about making these videos? Uh, yeah, what did I do? Like, yeah, some of the items weren't that really interesting because it did not really happen yet, so it was hard to film things that are not there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and if you look at the, the program okay. for, uh, for, next year, for this year, what's your favorite event? Uh, yeah, I think the Giants project is really interesting to see. Yeah, yeah, it's a really big project. I think the guys who uh, do this project are from France. Yeah. So they come here to do it, and I think people all around the world will watch it. Yeah, it's really interesting. So we we'll definitely uh, recommend this. Uh, yeah. Ones. Yeah. I think so. Do you think they would deserve it to be like the European capital? Of the yeah, I think so. It's like uh, people know um, uh, the Netherlands from Amsterdam, but uh, Leeuwarden is also a really nice city. Yeah. Also, have really lots of old buildings because mm -hmm. it did not be harmed by the war that much. Yeah. So I think it's really nice that they were this uh, cultural capital. Right. They have an all, own language as well. Yeah. So I think they deserve it. So not only uh, the old center, but also the new things. Yeah, exactly. Like uh, a better uh, city. Yeah. Yeah. So you think Leeuwarden is a better city than Amsterdam or Groningen? Yeah. Or, uh, uh, that's cultural capital. I think so. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for your interesting uh, story time and uh, good luck with it. <laughs> so we have to go to the next topic, which is uh, the second item of uh, media news. And this one is about the famous bitcoins. We wondered what the influence of media on cryptocurrency is. Well, cryptocurrency is a new way to uh, pay digital, but what is the influence media has on these currencies? In our studio, we have Jeroen to tell us more about this. But first, let's watch a short clip about what cryptocurrencies really are. Here. 
Welkom in Leeuwarden. Hier op een zijde. 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 A single bitcoin to this day is worth over 11,000 euros. <coughs> But why do these values keep increasing? First, let's explain what a cryptocurrency really is. When the first cryptocurrency came, Bitcoin, it had a few advantages. Normally, when we make transactions, the bank takes a small fee for their work. But the cryptocurrency denies using the bank. This means that when people are paying each other with cryptocurrency, they get it directly. Of course, there is a maximum number of cryptocurrencies available to make sure that the value won't decrease. And these days, it's even possible to buy different things with the coins. More shops are using cryptocurrency as a paying method, which in turn makes people more interested in crypto coins. A downside about this is that over the years, more and more new crypto coins are created, which makes the value unpredictable. But still, one coin takes the lead, which is the Bitcoin, which is worth over 11,000 euros at this moment. Yeah. Now we understand more about how cryptocurrencies work. Uh, yeah, yeah. However, yeah, cryptocurrencies yeah. also have some negative downsides. Mr. Letting knows a story about John McAfee, yeah. which shows the influence the media has on cryptocurrencies. I've read that a user, user on Twitter named John McAfee, he had a coin of the day and he posted that coin on Twitter so that his, follower, his followers would um, buy that coin and the value of that coin would increase. Therefore, the, he would make more money one, when he invested money in the coin beforehand. Also, people found out that he uh, posted those tweets to make a lot of money out of it. He claimed that he was hacked and that another user posted those tweets. And that is considered a scam. All the stories about this in the world. And we see that whenever a hacked exchange about one of these stories comes on the social media, it causes a downgrade in the value of the cryptocurrency. This is both because of the number of texts which are being written about cryptocurrencies and because of the different kinds of social media which are being used to discuss these cryptocurrencies on. In 2010, only one blog talked about cryptocurrencies. However, nowadays, over eight media platforms do so on a daily basis. But with many terrible stories like these, that are not easily trackable, the question arises, is the media able to control the value of cryptocurrencies? So if you're on the table who can tell us all about the bitcoins, this is because he uh, has bitcoins by himself. So this is for everyone a way to obtain more information about this bitcoin industry. So welcome Jeroen, thank you for joining us. Uh, how did you start with uh, cryptocurrency? I started with cryptocurrency about five, six months ago. Yeah. I uh, was crawling down my timeline on Facebook and I saw an article yeah. uh, from the Facebook page Slim Beleggen mm -hmm. in Dutch. And uh, I read the article and in the article was something about, yeah, you can earn a lot of money by investing in cryptocurrencies and in Bitcoin and other currencies. So I thought, yeah, why not? So I started with an um, um, yeah, 300 euros and yeah. I invested in Bitcoin. Okay, so you put 300 euros in Bitcoin? Yeah, I bought one Bitcoin as a, as a value yeah. and today I, I think Bitcoin is worth $8,000. Six months ago? Six months ago it was five, six thousand dollars and I invested one, uh, 300 euros in Bitcoin. So I got a little small piece of one Bitcoin. Yeah. And if the value of Bitcoin uh, rises or it yeah, has a downfall, yeah. that affects on my investment. Yeah. So in real money, you uh, put that in your wallet. Uh, how does it go with Bitcoin? Because you pay that o online, and then what do um, you do with it? Yeah, now, first of all, I can show you something. I have brought my wallet with me. That's uh, your uh, Bitcoin wallet. Yeah, this is my, my heart. Yeah. I, I do not have an online wallet, but it is yeah. my hardware wallet. So all your money is stored in this... Uh... Yeah, no, not my money, but by Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, at did, this moment I do have four till to five Bitcoin. Yeah. Maybe something like that. It's, yeah, sometimes it gets more or less. So. Yeah. 
Yeah. Very nice. And uh, are there any media platforms you follow to stay in touch with uh, the cryptocurrencies? Uh, yeah, um, first of all, the, the Facebook page, Slim Legends. And yes. besides that, uh, I'm a member of a community, an online community. Yeah. And it's a community for everyone who's investing in cryptocurrencies. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all social media. Yeah. We keep in touch and we share articles and we share. Right. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And have you be, really been influenced by media to buy bitcoins? Or yeah, just like a tool to help you. No, no. I started uh, investing in cryptocurrencies by social media. Yeah, that was the reason. Yeah. So, and are there any platforms you will recommend to others to follow if they want like good information? Yeah, um, it's always a it's risk to uh, what you believe yeah, or what not to believe. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, that Facebook page so and the community I'm a member of, it really helps me. Yeah. But some people follow the national news, so. Yeah. And Do you think life. that uh, uh, the media can really influence like the, the value of a Bitcoin? Yeah, definitely. Yeah? Yeah, I know, I, I think um, if there are a lot of articles and they're writing buy Bitcoin, it's very safe, do it, it's the future. Yeah. Uh, and people do it. I, in my life. opinion, the, the, the value of the Bitcoin could rise. But yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's always a risk. Yeah, it's, it's gambling. So. Yeah. So this is more about like the big media companies. Do you think that social media has a big influence on uh, on Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. definitely the first step to uh, start investing. Yeah. Social media platforms who uh, um, post the articles. Yeah, that's one of the biggest reasons people start to invest. Yeah. yeah. So, and uh, do you think that it's uh, easy to so manipulate, like the value of a Bitcoin? Yeah, because there are um, a lot of fake mess, uh, uh, articles which say that uh, Bitcoin will be, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it will uh, rise, the yeah. value will rise to $1,000, $100,000, I have to say, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And when people say that and they do not have the knowledge yet, they, they go, go to invest. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what do you believe? I don't know. I, I try to believe that, that, that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are the future, but yeah, uh, yeah I still have to see. Yeah, but where, where's it going to end the Bitcoin uh, world? But right now it's like 8,000, 9,000. Yeah, US? yesterday was the worst day for Bitcoin because the, the, the value dropped. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, it was a, yeah, a disaster, but I hope it will rise again. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow, maybe next week. Yeah. Uh, what's the, the best moment to buy a Bitcoin? Is it right now, should people now buy yeah. Bitcoin or wait when it uh, yeah. goes down? The value is now not very high, so yeah. I believe the value will rise again. So now is the time uh, to buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Yeah. I would say. Yeah. Are you going to buy uh, more Bitcoins? Maybe, maybe. I'm investing in other currencies as well, so yeah, I have to say. I, I, I'm following the, the, the Facebook uh, page and yeah. etc. So. I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. So imagine if there was like no media at all. Yeah. Do you think you have about Bitcoin? No. Should it be like Bitcoin in general? Um, yeah. There are people who have the knowledge about Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies, and no, okay, they are investing because they do really expect what to happen. Yeah. But for me, yeah, I I hope. I hope and I read articles on social media and social media is the reason I started yeah. investing. So and other, uh, also for others, uh, you yeah. think? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. So you think if media doesn't, doesn't exist or social media so will not exist, the Bitcoin so will not be that so high? No, yeah. definitely not. So you could say like media is one of the recent Bitcoins is like one of the really biggest nice. uh, yeah. cryptocurrencies uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. Are there like other cryptocurrencies people should buy because Bitcoin is already pretty high and yeah, you have um, several popular uh, um, currencies and Ethereum. It's yeah. a very popular one and Ethereum, Ethereum is um, yeah, it's rising all the time. Yeah, and when Bitcoin uh, has a downfall, Ethereum yeah. stays rising. Yeah. So that's a very safe one. Yeah. But it does does not rise very quickly. People do mm. want it. They, they, yeah, what they really want is they want to invest one hundred euros mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. and next week it has to be worth thousand dollars. So, right. clear. Thank you uh, very much, Jeroen, for your uh, interesting story. We're following up the next topic behind the song. Here is then, and there are a lot of talented students, like acting, sports, creative students, and musicians. We are proud to present you a student who is very talented as a musician. Her name is Maartje and we would like to let you take 
a taste of our talent as a singer songwriter. But first, we are going to watch a short movie about Chris, who is going to tell us all about his song and passion for music. Okay, talk tonight. I'm Chris van I'm a songwriter, I'm 90 years old. The instruments I play are the piano and guitar. I just started writing my own songs. I'm not quite a singer, but I'm willing to work on it. My music style is soft rock and pop. My favorite musician has to be Noah Gallagher. He's a former member of Oasis because he's the songwriter. Uh, so my passion for guitar yeah. playing started like two years yeah, ago. Yeah. A friend of mine had a guitar, so I was very jealous and bought one too. Okay, good. Um, yeah. Since yeah. then I play it every day and I got more and more into it. When I started writing my own songs, it was like, I think a year ago, when um, yeah, no, it's not three, the, 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 um, I'm sitting in my room, I'm playing all the music in the absurdity. Uh, 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 that is, that can be prima. But as it opens the mic, is, then is the microphone from the from the iMac on, and then hoort he dus alles wat wij niet zeggen door de uitzending. Nou, dat weet ik. Ja, prima. Things that come to mind. Ik heb met veel properties niet aanpassen. Source of inspiration is the Beatles, Rolling Stones, and 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 the